today? Fine, how are you? Doing well, doing well. Thank you for being the, the brave one to answer. <laughs> that was not rhetorical. Oh. All right, well, I'm glad you're all doing well. Glad to see everybody out today. We have a, a capacity crowd. Uh, I'm uh, excited by that. Uh, first off, let's uh, bless the food. Mr. Sellers, if you wouldn't mind blessing our food. All right. Sorry I got here late, but uh, we were at the gym. That's an excuse absence. <laughs> makes me nervous speaking for a crowd this big. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together. We thank you for this, this good crowd. I ask that you bless our day and, and bless each and every one of us and our families. and just, just be with us and help us with our decisions. and Just be with us and increase our faith. Amen. Amen. Right, thank you, Mr. Sellers. Um, I'm particularly excited about uh, our program today. I, obviously, you all are as well because you all came in uh, uh, in uh, force. Um, well, we've got uh, some hometown folks here today with us. Uh, Mr. Bob Franks and Miss Mona Robinson Mills. Uh, most of you know Bob Franks throughout the years from the, the courthouse, ICDC, and now at uh, the Illinois Historical Society. Um, and also, he's a great, great photographer. Uh, and Miss Miss Mills, you probably know as well. She's uh, from Fulton and uh, now lives in Oxford with her husband Mike, who is a, a U.S. District Court judge. Um, Mona produced um, images of America, uh, Itawamba County, a few years back, and now here's round two. She brought Bob along this time, and it's uh, just as good or better, I would say. It's. Uh, Images of America Fulton, and it's got some great uh, images um, that I'm sure Bob and Mona will talk about. Uh, I'll just give them the floor. Uh, if you would give them a round of applause. Appreciate being here. Uh, what we will do today, I will give a little uh, short history of the beginning of Fulton, and then Mona will talk about the new book. Uh, one interesting thing is, is on May the 11th, which will be a little over a month from now, Fulton will be celebrating their 180th birthday, uh, being organized on May the 11th, 1837. Before Fulton was organized, Etiwamba County did not have a county seat. Uh, most of the county business the first year of the county's organization in 1836 took place in the Van Buren area on the river. This was one of the first settled areas of the county, Van Buren and Carson. Uh, County business took place in storehouses in the old village of Van Buren and also in people's private homes. James Spears Borland, he was the first president of the County Board of Police. Uh, they held uh, their meetings at his home uh, just south of Van Buren. One of the first actions of the County Board of Police uh, was the organization of the county. And in this uh, first meeting, uh, they were planning an election uh, to elect uh, county officers. And uh, if you'll notice in these minutes, uh, it said that uh, Lewis H. Gideon be appointed clerk pro tem of this court. And we will meet next in October at the house of James Beard Borland. So there was no courthouse or anything in Edwin County at that time. Then, as I mentioned earlier, Fulton was organized on May the 11th, 1837, by an act of the Mississippi Legislature. Uh, land speculators in the Chickasaw Nation donated uh, an area for the county seat, which was named Fulton. The new town was divided into lots and blocks. Uh, John Thompson, he was uh, named the first postmaster for the town of Fulton, and uh, the county started selling lots in the new town. Uh, one of the first lot buyers was Reuben Weigel and his wife. Uh, that's a picture of Reuben's wife. Uh, 
Tarpley Stegall uh, Weigel. Uh, they purchased a lot in Block A and built a tavern and a hotel. That was in 1837. Then after Bolton was organized, county business was held in private business houses before there was a courthouse built. The first courthouse built, has, it's been said that it was a log building. The brick courthouse was not built until 1852. This is an early view of the first courthouse on the town square here. I love the trees. I do too. <laughs> We're very fortunate there's a lot of letters and diaries that has been kept from this era uh, telling about life in Fulton. Uh, if you'll notice on the left, one of the first Board of Police minutes for 1837 after the formation of uh, Fulton, William H. Toomer and company made application to the court for a license to authorize his retail spiritus liquor in the house of the town of Fulton for a span of one year. They granted him his license for his saloon. Uh, Josiah Hines, uh, he came to Etiwamba County in 1839, and he kept a diary. And it tells you the type of uh, the society we had here in the beginning. He wrote, we're among strangers in a strange land and in a wilderness, uh, where the hoot of the owl and the cry of the wolf is still heard. We're almost in the woods, one cabin only to shelter us and our little ones, and a real pen for a smokehouse and kitchen. No churches have been established for the worship of God. In 1843, he came to Fulton on business. He wrote, was at Fulton yesterday. Had to wade through Bigby Swamp. Got wet and don't feel well. They were swilling down the devil's fire water. Saw one poor <laughs> drunken fellow with his face very much scratched and bleeding. Had been fighting. That was in 1843. <laughs> where, did he, where did he settle when he came to He settled in the Oak Grove community north of Mantachie. He had a brother who was an attorney here in Fulton. Uh, he's buried in the Fulton Cemetery. Uh, this is the old Fulton and Pontotoc Road, the main street, looking west. Of course, this picture was taken after the turn of the 20th century, but I have read several accounts where Fulton remained unchanged from the 1850s until at least the 1920s. So basically, this is a, a good view of what Fulton probably looked like in the beginning years. This is looking west toward the Tumbiki River. Aeolian Grove in Fulton, uh, it was built in the 1830s, more than likely by the Eckford family of Aberdeen. Uh, the Eckfords had relatives here in Fulton, the Clifton family. The house was sold in 1842 by the Eckfords uh, to William Tannehill. William Tannehill had come here from England. Uh, he arrived in the port of New York and uh, came down uh, the Ohio River, the Tennessee River, to Eastport, and then down the Wilderness Trail. Uh, he kept, uh, he wrote letters back to England. This is one of his letters that he wrote after coming to Fulton. There is very little money current here. Mr. T, which is Mr. Joshua Toomer, is glad to have the yearly accounts of the farmer settled by the cotton, which can be turned into specie at Mobile. I wrote this in my own log cabin, which, barring a few chinks, is not a bad one. The country here is but thinly settled, and it's only been six years since the Indians left. We live on a bread of Indian corn, which is the only kind used here. Their hogs are excellent, being fed in the woods on nuts and acorns. All men here are not merely nominally, but really equal. The other day, a man was taken up here for going to shoot a neighbor. The sheriff allowed him to go at large about the town. He rode around the town, whooping, crowing like a cock, and dared the officer at the point of a knife to lay a hand on him. Two men have been shot in Mr. Toomer's store. Sounds <laughs> like today. Of course, with all these shootings going on, there was a need for a jailhouse. <laughs> this is the original jailhouse for Etiwamba County. It's uh, currently where City Hall is today. 
the historical society, we're fortunate to have the original jail door and also the original keys of the jail house. Do you know when that was torn down? I don't know. I don't know either. We oh. Yeah. Burned, I think, in the 30s or 40s. Uh, of course, after, shortly after the town was organized, there was a need for a cemetery. Uh, as death visited the new town, the early citizens were buried south of the Russell Road on a grassy knoll adjacent to the Fulton Mail Academy, east of the village. However, it was not until 1850 that a formal deed was recorded uh, for this cemetery. The cemetery contains many ornate monuments of the early citizens of the village. Uh, this is a transcript I did of the original deed to the cemetery uh, that was deeded in the early 1850s. Uh, as mentioned, there's lots of ornate monuments in the cemetery. Uh, the earliest monument I have found is this one in the center, uh, Matilda M. Casey. Uh, she was a Gaither, uh, married uh, Dr. Newton Casey, and I think that monument is 1846. Here's a view of the cemetery. Uh, I think this photo was taken in the late 40s or early 1950s. Uh, you can see the cemetery on the grassy knoll. Malachi Crawford Cummings, uh, probably more has been written about him than anyone. He was considered the father of Fulton uh, because of his generosity uh, in developing the town. He came to Fulton in the 1830s from Columbus and during 1840 he was elected to represent the county in the state legislature. Uh, he held that for several terms. Uh, he was a businessman, a planner, building several of the town's structures during antebellum times. Uh, that's a picture of his monument in the Fulton Cemetery. His home was up north Cummings Street, just north of Cummings Creek on the hill. It was called Sunnydale. <coughs> and this is a view of Sunnydale that was taken around 1890. Uh, another early family of Fulton is the Gaither family. Uh, they were retail merchants who came down from Tennessee. Uh, in the 1860 census, uh, there were two stores, Alfred P. Gaither and then G.B., which is Gilbert Burgess Gaither, uh, had two stores here in Fulton. Uh, the photos you see on the lower left, that is uh, Alfred P. Gaither. Uh, his real name was, full name was Alfred Coatsworth Pickney Gaither. Uh, his wife on the left was Mat uh, Melinda. She was a Roberts. She was also the niece of Malachi Crawford Cummins, the father of Fulton. Uh, the picture on the right is uh, two of their daughters. Uh, the girl on the right, uh, Nanny May Gaither, she married uh, Yancey Sims. I think they moved west to Arkansas. The Clifton family in Fulton is one of the first families. Wiley Daniel Clifton came to Yetawama County from Wake County, North Carolina uh, during the late 1830s with his brother John and first cousins Henry and Joel. Henry and Joel and John settled east of Fulton in the Clay community, uh, but Wiley settled here in Fulton. He also purchased a vast amount of acreage on Tulip Creek between Morville and Skyland, uh, where he ran a plantation. In Fulton, he was a store owner, and he was also one of the trustees of the Fulton Female Academy. This is his monument and Fulton Cemetery. This is probably the most ornate monument in the cemetery. Uh, the picture on the right is of his daughter, Julia. Uh, Julia was born and raised in Fulton. Uh, when she got to be about 13 years old, she was sent to boarding schools uh, in New England. 
and eastern states. So she came back uh, to Fulton and uh, moved to Aberdeen where her expert cousins lived. And this is a photograph of her taken in the later 1800s. Uh, Clifton was uh, quite successful. Uh, he had purchased over 2,000 acres of land 13 miles west of Fulton and uh, developed a successful cotton plantation. He became partners in a mercantile business on Main Street in the small village in 1839 under the name of Egbert and Clifton, uh, with the Egbert family of Aberdeen being his partners. Uh, at this time, he built a substantial house and it was regarded during antebellum times as the finest home in Fulton. This home is where the present day Church of Christ is located. Another large antebellum home in Fulton was the Eli Phillips home at the corner of Cummings Street and Weigel Street. Uh, it went through some changes through the years and later became a hotel and boarding house. This is where s and Pharmacy is located today. Uh, Sarita Green, Fulton historian, she wrote once, I remember Mrs. Phillips for her pretty flowers, hollyhocks and other flowers back of the house at the edge of the garden and orchard, and the two large continuously blooming white rose bushes on each side of the wall at her doorway. She kept a pair of scissors hanging on the nail in the hall, and on leaving she would always cut a bouquet of roses and give us. Another old home of Fulton was the William Harvey Keyes home. Uh, this is located where the present-day police department is. This home was burned in the 1960s uh, to build uh, a medical office. Uh, William Harvey Keyes, he was the son of the judge and planter James Keyes of the Keyes Cemetery area. Uh, he built the home in 1861 at the corner of South Cummings and Cedars Street in Fulton and lived there until 1878 when he moved back to the old Keyes plantation across the river. The home was sold to Dr. J.M. Walker. By 1910 census, he is listed as living on Green Street in Cupola with an occupation of home income. In 1898, Judge Shadrach Newman Case purchased the Oak Keys house before moving to Aberdeen and later Columbus. William Harvey Keyes served in several elected positions in Etowamba County through the 1860s and 1870s. <coughs> The smaller photograph at the bottom, uh, that's uh, the old smokehouse of the Keys home. <clears throat> Another early family of Fulton was the Casey family. Dr. Newton Casey, he was a merchant and attorney. He was elected mayor of Fulton in 1842. Uh, that's a photograph of his wife, Matilda, uh, Matilda Gaither's monument in the Fulton Cemetery. Uh, the old Busy Bee Cafe building, that was his law office in the 1850s on the town square. Uh, Washington Lafayette Clayton, who uh, was a Fulton attorney here in the 1860s and later became quite a writer, uh, wrote of Casey. Dean Case was another old timer of Fulton, with whom I wish to say something. He had removed from Fulton several years before I went there and settled in Iuka, having been a successful merchant retired with a competency. I knew Colonel Case in my boyhood days, as I did Wiley Clifton, seeing him occasionally and hearing him much of the time. He was a man of medium height, heavy set, compactly built, having a large head, high and broad forehead, <coughs> and a very expressive face. He was a very polite and possessed a kind and noble heart. You never saw him but that he was as neat as a pen, wearing a bouquet on the lapel of his coat when flowers were to be found, and his deference to women was proverbial. <laughs> this is a portrait of Newton, uh, Dr. Newton Case's son, Shadrach Newton Case. Uh, Shadrach, he was born and reared in Fulton uh, at the Casey home. Uh, in 1893, Shadrach wrote, My father moved from Lawrence County, Tennessee to Fulton, Mississippi in 1839-40 and resided here until about 1855 when he moved to Eastport. 
1856, he moved to Iuka and continued to reside there until about 1872 when he went to Texas. After his return to, from Texas, he remained at this place, Fulton, until his death in 1884. And then that's a picture of Casey's monument in the old Fulton Cemetery. Shadrach, uh, he was an attorney. He later became a district judge. Uh, he left Fulton around 1895, moved to Aberdeen, and then to Columbus. <coughs> Another one of the old homes in Fulton that's still standing is uh, popularly known as the Dorita Greenhouse. The original section front of the home was built around 1849 by Robert and Louisa Malfi. Robert was a Fulton attorney, and his wife, Louisa, operated the Fulton Female Academy, a boarding school located near the corner of Maine and South Cummings, two blocks south of the home. The boarding school taught the young daughters of many planters in southern and western Etowamba County, including the Whitesides, Dowd, Standerford, Creighton, and Lindsay families. This is another view of the house, and also an 1850 census extract of the Malkin residence and it shows all the students that boarded with them during the year 1850. <clears throat> Fulton uh, began growing during the early 1840s. Uh, there were all types of celebrations in the town. Uh, this was taken from the Fulton Herald dated July 10, 1845. They were celebrating uh, the birthday of Andrew Jackson and also the 4th of July and it tells about what all took place, who the mayor was, uh, who the special speakers were. Uh, you notice Mayor Case uh, did a delivery of a speech so he was mayor in 1845. Uh, G.B. Gaither spoke, S. Gilbert Burgess Gaither, Thomas Wren, several names. Here's a good overview of the village of Fulton. This photo was taken in 1921. However, as mentioned early, uh, Fulton didn't change much from antebellum times up till 1920. So that's basically what the village looked like during the 1800s. Here, yeah. That's the courthouse. Uh -huh. And uh, here's the police court uh, minutes. Uh, during 1866, uh, where a petition uh, of these two men uh, asking to uh, sell retail venue spirits in the town in an establishment known as the Long Star Drinking Saloon. And that was in 1866. <clears throat> Uh, the first church in Bolton was the Methodist Church. Uh, it was originally located uh, about one block northwest of where the Catholic Church is today. It was considered a union church because different denominations used the church. The Baptist used the church, the Cumberland Presbyterian used the church, and the Methodist used the church. So it was considered a union church. Uh, that's an 1850 census abstract of Arthur Bullard. He was the CP minister, which is Cumberland Presbyterian here in the town of Fulton. Another old home in Fulton that no longer exists is the old Howard home that was built around 1859. Uh, Martin Whitford Howard married Martha Angeline Barnes on November 30th, 1859 and had several children in Fulton. And shortly after their marriage, he built this home, which was located next to the grammar school. It was behind Miss Neil May's house uh, when I was a kid. Uh, he was the son of George Howard. That's George's monument. He's buried in the Fulton Cemetery. You can see a medical card for Dr. M. W. Howard. Uh, that's in an 1860 newspaper for Fulton. I mentioned earlier Washington Lafayette Clayton. 
he was a, an attorney in Fulton from around 1859 to about 1867. Uh, the Clay, he was born in 1836 in Clayton's Grove, Alabama, uh, which is in Jefferson County. Uh, he was the son of Charles Collier Clayton III and Eliza Berryman Ritchie. That, those are two portraits uh, of his parents. Uh, those portraits today are in the Lee County Library in Tupelo on display in the genealogy room. Washington LeBay Clayton, he has a, an infant son buried in the Fulton Cemetery uh, close to the Clayton plot. Here's a, a document, an 1850 town election uh, when they were electing a constable for the town. Uh, if you'll notice, uh, the total votes, one uh, William Beecham received 29 votes and B.B. Ross received three votes. So there were 32 electors in the town of Fulton in 1850. <clears throat> the Fulton Southern Herald was a newspaper in Fulton from the 1850s through the 1860s. Uh, you can see lots of old advertisements of businesses in the town of Fulton. You can see F. W. Willis Wagon and Carriage Shop, Martin Ryan's Blacksmith Shop, of course Dr. Howard. Uh, here's an ad for E. G. Betts uh, General Merchandise Store. That's a portrait of David Johnson and his wife. He was the editor of Fulton Paper during the later 1800s. <laughs> the Cedars uh, was built uh, during the mid-1800s in Fulton. Uh, Pleasant Case, he was born September 9, 1811 in Tennessee. He and his wife, Eddie Anderson, brought their family to Fulton from Purdy in McNary County where he purchased the Aeolian Grove. He later built the Cedars on Main Street. Pleasant was a merchant in town as well as owning the cotton gin. Of course, everybody uh, who grew up in Fulton knows that is the Gaither House where Grady and Noble lived for years. Lots of old monuments in the Fulton Cemetery. These are monuments of uh, people who died during the Civil War in Fulton. On the left is Stephen Davenport's uh, monument. He was assassinated on Cumming Street in 1864. He was coming from Rains. He headed to Aberdeen and was uh, waylaid and shot. A with a son, that is uh, the young Clifton boy. He was only 16 served uh, in the army. He died in a hospital in Pensacola, Florida. And uh, I always thought that monument uh, was very touching. Uh, it's a widow's son. Uh, Mrs. Clifton had lost her husband to yellow fever just a few years before she lost her son. Back during the uh, 1800s, uh, Miss Molly Gaither wrote about the Civil War in Fulton. She said at the breaking out of the Civil War in 1861, there were about 40 voters within the corporate limits of the town, and five or six boys who were underage. Of that number, 18 were killed in battle and died of disease contacted in the Army. So that shows you that Fulton lost half of the men in the town during the Civil War. It has often been written that the town was devastated by the Civil War. Uh, during the 1920s, they had a homecoming in Fulton where they invited people from all across the United States to come back to Fulton for a big homecoming. Uh, one of the people who came back was uh, Byron Yancey Cummings. Uh, from Texas. He had been away from Fulton for 45 years. He wrote uh, this little piece about Fulton. He titled it, How Dear to My Heart and the Saints of My Childhood. Early Wednesday morning, I saw a little one by dawn. I saw a bursting ball of glory rise above the eastern hills. I looked toward the grave of Dunn, a dog where you and I had mourned his death. 
and wrapped him in a shroud of wagon sheets. Dunn was too good a dog to lie unclad beneath the sod. I saw the remnants of Aeolian Grove and the wreck and ruin of Sunnydale. At evening, I saw the sunset's golden glow across the river, and then I saw each twinkling star in the Milky Way and all the permanent. Okay. That's the end of the presentation. Now we'll turn it over to Mona, and she will tell you about the book that's just been published. <laughs> Oh, that was wonderful, Bob. And that's that's sort of a yeah. so Bob Bob kind of took the the history of Fulton up to to just after the Civil War, and then there's a additional history, of course, after the war. Um, you know, like much of the South, Fulton was was devastated as well. And um, you know it's just just bad times, and it really uh, Fulton slid along until um, you know pretty stagnant. There, there was a, a brief um, uh, a brief economic flurry, I guess uh, just before the turn of the century, related to uh, uh, timber and, and logging, and then that uh, that went away only to come back in full force in the 1920s and uh, the 1920s is where most of the growth of, of Fulton took place. We had the uh, opening of the Itawamba Agricultural High School in 1921 and also during that same time period Bankhead Highway was established. If you can imagine we had um, uh, concrete they concreted down to the uh, the cemetery there, the Fulton Cemetery, where now you know, Highway 25, and so the concrete highway went there, and then it was gravel the rest of the way. But it was uh, uh, until later, and it was it was eventually concreted too. But the the highway and the uh, opening of the high school, and then the just the huge impact that the, the lumber industry had uh, bringing new people in and, and creating jobs and um, you know homes were being built and it was, uh, it was it was just a golden era in Fulton in the 1920s and, uh, and then we I think too it, in uh, following World War two there was another one as, as People came back after World War II, and um, the automobile started becoming more prevalent in the county. And you, we saw in the town of Fulton just a huge growth in service stations and auto parts stores. And, um, you know, it's, it's just interesting to to see that. Uh, have how many of you have already gotten the book or have seen the book in some way? Have you got any questions about any of the pictures? Or um, most of them came um, out of uh, Dalmas Harden's collection of, of um, negatives, and Ruby Dale was very generous to allow Bob and I to to search through the negatives, and uh, we we went through hundreds, <laughs> hundreds. And it was so hard narrowing it down just to these, you know, because we were limited as to exactly how many photographs we could use and how many pages there could be. And uh, we w wanted to kind of present photographs that would, would tell a story and, and um, um, you know, and impart information. So, um, you know, we always like good, good pictures, but you know, we wanted the story to be told as well. Uh, so, really, if y'all have any questions um, about any of the, the photographs in the book or anything related to how, how we put it together. Um, the cover, you know, when, when Bob and I started um, thinking about the cover of the book because that was one of the first things that um, Arcadia Publishing wanted. They wanted the, the cover and we rounded up uh, 
I don't know, between five and ten photographs to send to them. Um, and, you know, it's the usual suspects, you know, the courthouse and some of the, you know, the older black and white photographs, you know. But there was something, wasn't too long after I think we sent them the five to ten, and they, they sent back you know, some images and how it might look. And then that one kind of came across us and it came from a negative and it just, I don't know, it was Bob and I both, it just kind of spoke to us, you know, this Mr. Betts, who, who I did not know, but how wonderful him standing there in front of the Fulton Furniture Company and, and, um, and that truck with the Itawamba County Fair sign on the, the side there where it's, uh, it's uh, promoting the Inawamba County Fair, which was a big deal every year. And um, um, it was fun going through all the old newspapers, too, because we would, the, the negatives were, are stored at Sprint Print and Tupelo uh, upstairs in their attic, which is neither heated or cooled. <laughs> but, uh, and surprisingly, Good condition, but they uh, the negatives are are in filing cabinets, filing drawers, arranged by years. So um, if you had the newspaper for that year, you could go through and you know find photographs, and you'd know then to go to the, to the cabinet and try to find it in the cabinet. There were some great photographs we never were able to find that, that they appeared in the newspaper, but there were no negatives for. And then, um, and then the reverse would be true too, you know, because page through every envelope of negatives, you know, and pull them out and look and see, see what there might be. But the, um, I, I can't give enough credit to to Dallas Harden and. Uh, and Ruby Dell for preserving the, those negatives, but <coughs> oh my gosh, th those negatives are such a reflection of Itawampa County from from the late 40s. That they, they, they really started about 1949, like 48, 49, up to uh, when it started when they started going digitally. When the photographs were um, digital cameras came out and digital images were used in the I guess that was in the um, 90s, but uh, Damas Harden has recorded uh, through his lens just a wonderful history of our county. He covered, um, you know, bridal showers, baby showers, <laughs> weddings, uh, I, any event, uh, family reunions, um, Sunday school picnics. Uh, it was just. There's there's just so many photographs there, um, so it was it was difficult narrowing down what we used in the book. But, but a huge huge debt of gratitude to the Harden family. Um, You're so indebted to you two uh, for this. Yeah, uh, Bob and I had a, we had a lot of fun going through it. It took a little longer than than we both anticipated. And, I remember how many hours you spent when you were doing that yeah. first book on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was nice to, to have uh, have a co-author on this one, I'll tell you that. So, um, uh, the school. Well, you, you spent a few hours putting all this together. I love your images, those colorful in images combined with the old. Wasn't that remarkable? Very informative. Now, is this publishing company doing this type of thing all across the United mm -hmm. States? Mm -hmm. How did you get involved with it? Um, originally, back with the Etiwamba County book, someone passed along my name. And uh, I just submitted a proposal, and um, it was through Arcadia Publishing. And this uh, Images of America are. I mean, it's just photographic history. It's a collection of vintage photographs, and 
all across the country and, and some of the subjects you look at and you think how many people buy that book you know because <laughs> it's very very narrowly defined I can't think of a, a good example but um, but there's there's markets out there and and, and I like the because I like that the way this company's doing it and has has done it is because it preserves you know a community's history and, and photographs and, and um, you know there's uh, the company bears all the, the cost of publishing the risk uh, of, of uh, whether or not it makes any money you know it it's uh, entirely they bear that risk so for for us as authors we just all we have to do really is, is just our time and all. And by, all, the, all the profits from the book, whether it's royalties received from the sale of um, you know, the retail outlets or whether they're purchased through the Edwama Historical Society, all the profits go to the Historical Society. And um, so that's something Bob and I felt very strongly about. But yeah, I love that. Images of America. I've got I've got books from Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge. Um, and there's some local too. Um, the first one, I, first two I I bought actually were Lamar County, Alabama, and Marion County, Alabama. Barb Carruth uh, over there in Alabama did those books, and um, love I love them. There's also one in Tupelo, mm -hmm. in Lee County, is, there's a Lee County. Not Lee, I think it's just two blocks. It's just two blocks. Yeah, one. just two blocks. Marion Riley and a few other, two others I think put that together. Yeah, it's kind of interesting about that because I had, I had contacted Julian Riley, someone had Julian Riley, not Marion. He had a, had a source, he was a source for old photographs and, and collected, so I actually met with him at the Lee County Library doing the, the other book and uh, he would he'd say well come I'll be there on Wednesday at noon or whatever so I, I showed up and he and these other guys were actually going through photographs old photographs and they were going to publish a book and I said well you really ought to look into this Images of America series mm -hmm. because I'm working on one and that that may be a way of and sure enough that's what they did a couple of years later um, great collection of old photographs. But Julian had um, he had he had some from Etiwamba County, and I used two or three of those in the last book that he shared. Okay. Interesting guy. Yes, he is. Yeah. But uh, if if you'd like to purchase a book, we've got some here from the we historical can't sell society. Them, but we, we can't sell them. Mm -hmm. Well, we take a donation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, <laughs> <laughs> so you can also claim it on your taxes and make it out to the historical society. Make it out to the historical society. Well, therefore, it's also taxable. So you end up with get something twice, you get nothing. $25 with COVID, but a little more with hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't Okay. Well, as Miss Larry said, we are so de deeply indebted to to Bob and uh, to Mona for chronicling the histories of Fulton and Alamba County and uh, our historical society in general. We are so lucky to have a, a wonderful historical society. I know there's tons of counties around our area who are not so lucky. Uh, uh, so I'm thankful to all the work the historical society does in, in preserving our heritage. Um, before uh, we dismiss, I uh, just wanted to remind you, uh, we will meet again. Uh, we were going to try to meet during National Library Week, but that Friday ends up uh, consequently being Good Friday. Uh, so we will be off that day. So we will uh, um, come back April 28th. We will have Laurie Parker, who is a fairly well-known uh, Mississippi author from uh, the town of Bruce. Uh, she's done every type of um, book from children's books to uh, uh, novels now so she um, has been around uh, as an independent author for about 10 years or more uh, she's a fascinating person if you would like to come and and hear from her thank you all for coming and uh, please be sure and support your historical society
Thank, Thank you. you for having us.